Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's message is, as Pastor Shiwe mentioned just a few moments ago, taken from the first lesson, the epistle lesson, third chapter of the book of Philippians, with special emphasis on the uh, 13th and 14th verses, and once again these words read, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is our text, dear family and friends in Christ Jesus. Amen. Every now and then, from time to time, Pastor Shiwe and I, in preparing for a a particular Sunday, or even just, uh, again, preparing ourselves for those times when we will preach, we do take opportunities to read other pastor sermons, to listen to them uh, deliver those sermons, to help kind of uh, sharpen our focus, uh, give us a new insight, new thought, new approach, new style, uh, and so forth. And, and some time ago, not that long ago, I read a sermon that began with an in- interesting scenario that's going to kind of help make sense of my sermon title uh, this morning, which is The Next Ten Minutes. Uh, and, and it began this way. Here it is. What I want you to do is to imagine with me, if you will, that you are at home, sitting in your most comfortable chair, maybe watching TV, reading a book, doing whatever, playing or whatever. And then you hear a knock at the door. And you go and answer the door, and there standing at the door is an individual who's wearing a designer suit, Armani or something, I don't know, whatever those designer suits are. And he says, Congratulations, I have some great news for you. I am willing to give you, as he opens up a briefcase filled with money, $10 million for 10 minutes of your time. Now, as soon as he makes that offer, obviously all sorts of questions are are going to come to your mind, like, uh, what am I going to have to do for this $10 million? Is this money going to be guaranteed? Uh, Am I going to be safe? What 10 minutes are you talking about? When is this uh, going to happen among other questions like that. So uh, let me ask you, if you had this opportunity, realizing that there potentially could be a great deal of risk on your part uh, to be involved with this, uh, who of you here would be willing to uh, make that deal for for $10 million? Go ahead, you can raise your hands. I know we're Lutheran, but nothing's going to happen to you, I promise. It's okay. So there's a few. There's a few of you who would do that. and, and what might influence your decision would be the thought thinking, well, what could possibly happen in 10 minutes that I couldn't recover from? After all, even if I would be in excruciating pain, it would only be for 10 minutes, and then I would be able to enjoy $10 million for the rest of my life. It's interesting to think about that, isn't it? And what I'd like you to do is to hold on to that thought, stick it in the back part of your brain right now as we move forward and as we take a closer look and consider uh, God's invitation or God's call to us to follow him. You see, here's the thing. When we are called by Jesus, ultimately, Jesus demands everything from us. Jesus says you must be willing to die for every single thing in this life. And you need to do that so that you can live in Christ. You must be willing to do anything that God puts in front of you. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not contradicting that that theological truth that salvation is free because it is free. Uh, God's grace is, is what salvation is all about. However, I will tell you that following Jesus will really cost you everything. And, and when we're thinking about that, in all reality, we know that life here on earth is but a, a blink of an eye, a moment in time, a, just a very quick moment when compared to the eternity that awaits us as Christians. And so, if we are willing to do just about anything, if we are willing to endure just about anything for 10 minutes of time so that we could, we could get $10 million, really only $10 million in comparison to that, How much sense does it make for us to live our life of complete surrender to Jesus when he has promised us an eternity with him in heaven? Now, with that being said, I'm convinced that it's it's all really about keeping that right and proper perspective on all those different things that that happen in our lives. And 
And, and that's where the challenge can very easily come in as we face those different difficulties every single day of our lives. It's, it's so easy, is it not, to get caught up in, in the hardships that we face, the difficulties that we endure, the, the frustrations that fill our days that really do not have an impact on eternity. And that's why it's so important that we do everything we can to focus on Jesus. Now, today's text helps us really kind of put all that in its proper perspective. Let me, let me read it for you one more time. It's a great section of Scripture, Philippians chapter 3. I encourage you to read that when you go home. Go ahead and read the whole book. It's a relatively short book. Uh, if you weren't feeling good uh, before reading it, you'll feel better afterwards because there's a lot of inspiration in Philippians. But Philippians chapter 3, our text, once again, it says, Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, I'll tell you, when I read this section of Scripture preparing for today, and I reread that section of Scripture, and I, I read that section of Scripture again, there was something that St. Paul said that really seemed to jump out at me uh, when I read this section of Scripture over and over again. And, it, and it's that little phrase, to press on, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. To press on. You see, the, the selection of words there, press on, it is so much stronger than just, just following Jesus. To press on, it seems to add a sense of urgency to the whole deal. St. Paul isn't just talking about a general obedience here, but rather he's saying that he's, he's putting all of his strength and all of his energy, all of his effort into this goal of reaching the end of his race so that he's going to receive that prize of heaven that God has prepared just for him, that he's, he's calling him to. So the question I believe that really, really needs to be asked at this particular point in time and, and is this, with what sort of urgency are you living your life? Or to put it another way, uh, uh, what effort are, are you putting into reaching the end of your race? Basically, the question is, what's your end game? Well, what are you looking for at, at, at the end of your life? Are you living your life for the present? Or are you living your life for that which is to come? And I have to tell you, it's very important to, to think about these things, to wrestle with these questions, because how you answer these questions is really going to have an impact on, on everything that you do in your life as, as it comes your way. And when I'm talking about perspective, how you live your life, end game, uh, let me give you an uh, illustration, a little story to help you better maybe understand what it is that I'm talking about. Um, let's say that we have two women who just got a job uh, at a shop, say, up in Toledo. Okay, and uh, when they are in the job, they work in the small room with the machinery that is there. They turn cranks and pull levers and push buttons among all sorts of other things. It does light reflections on, 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 the, on the wall and, and all sorts of variety of other things. But, but the, the deal is this, that every single night, uh, that machine resets and they have to start from scratch the next morning. But the story behind the story is that the first woman uh, in, in this situation she was told that uh, her work, even though seemingly meaningless and insignificant, that at the end of the first year, that her salary would simply be one million dollars. Now, the second woman, she was told that what she was going to be doing is she's going to be making minimum wage, and that at the end of each week, uh, they were going to deduct 50 bucks uh, a week for uh, union dues. Now, obviously, these two women that are there, they go to work with a very different perspective. For the woman who, who's making a million dollars at the end of the year, she has a certain spring in her step. She's excited. She comes to work uh, with great joy every single day because she knows what's waiting for her. She can't wait uh, to get that million dollars. She's even found whistling, and, and she's very happy and excited. But the other woman, on the other hand, uh, she's always frustrated about everything that's taking place every single day and, and is oftentimes found grumbling and mumbling and even talking to herself, uh, especially when she sees that lady next to her whistling and just, just being way too happy. Well, it gets to her to the point where, where finally she quits. Think about it. Both of those women were doing the exact same thing, and yet one made it the best uh, that they possibly could, and the other ended up quitting. The only difference between the two was what they believed about the future. You see, what you believe about your future, what you believe about eternity, 
that's going to have a major impact on how you live your life today and how you're going to live your life the next 10 minutes. So, what's your goal? What are you pressing on for? I'll tell you this. This is, this is how I see it. Ultimately, uh, I'm not uh, going after. I'm not, I'm not pressing on for a crown or some kind of reward for, for all those different things that I've done in my life. I'm not, I'm not striving to improve my social status and reputation. Not even uh, going after all kinds of riches. After all, these things are nice and you know, they're, they're good along the way, but ultimately, these things are only temporary. You see, my ultimate goal our ultimate goal should ultimately be to know Jesus. But, but not just to know about Jesus, but to really get to know Jesus and have him play an important role in your life. Obviously, we're never going to really get to know him the same way that he knows us. He knows us far better. But the thing is, through the gift of faith, you're going to see this transformation taking place uh, in your life. And, and that transformation... Now, it's going to have an impact on, on what you think and, and what you say and, and what you do and, and the decisions that you make in your life. And, and uh, the challenge, though, is that this transformation, it, it doesn't happen quickly. But it can begin. This transformation can begin in the next 10 minutes. Think about this from Romans chapter 12. St. Paul again writes, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. You see, a transformation really needs to take place in every single one of our lives, because in the end, each and every one of you, each, uh, the pastor, Shiwi and myself, we are all sinful human beings. And that challenge is that, that that transformation, man, it just rarely ever takes place quickly. Transformation, uh, it, it's a long and many times a tedious process. It takes time. Transformation doesn't just happen overnight. That's why we want to use the next 10 minutes wisely. Right? See, uh, that's one of the great challenges in our society today because we are a society of instant gratification. Are we not? We don't want to wait. We want what we want, when we want it, and we want it now. It's kind of like that old J.G. Wentworth commercial, remember? I want my money and I want it now. Good, there's a few of you that are still awake. I appreciate that. That's great. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't want to wait for anything. Many times we don't even want to work for that. We just want everything and, and we want it free and we want it now. It's true, isn't it? That... Life has a way of bogging us down. It has a way of slowing us up and preventing us from, from pressing on towards that goal of everlasting life. And that's exactly what St. Paul is getting at in today's text. He's saying, you know, he very easily could have been so focused on his past, on, on the things that he did throughout his life, that it could have prevented him from doing the work of the Lord. Remember what he said at the beginning of, of today's epistle lesson? He said, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was from the people of Israel. I was from the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. I, he was a Pharisee. And and so much more. As far as his past go, we could say that St. Paul, that, that he had it all. And interestingly, I guess you could say that uh, back then, Paul's story revolved around Paul, didn't it? And that very easily could have prevented him from pressing on, moving forward, doing what the Lord wanted him to do, but it didn't. And that same thing can very easily happen. So easy then to be consumed about these things that we fail in our transformation to be the people that God has called us to be. And the thing is, whether things are going extremely great or we're, we're wallowing in a big mess, friends, we need to press on towards the goal. And that's where the next 10 minutes comes into play. Think about this for a minute. What would happen if the next time, a oh, when things are going good, when we are on top of the world, when we don't really <clears throat> seemingly have a care in the world? <laughs> it's tough to fit Jesus in the picture. There's so many things we've got to do, so many people we've got to see, so much that we need to accomplish because of, of, of what we do. Uh, because it's all about us. And likewise, when, when things aren't 
going so well, when your marriage is in trouble, when your career is on the rocks, when your dreams are smashed, when your children are struggling, a hardship sets in, or whatever, that at that moment, you would stop. And for the next 10 minutes, you would enter into prayerful conversation with the Lord. Or, or when, when you're struggling with your marriage and you just seem to be at, at, at odds with each other and, and, and rather than continue on in that bickering and fighting and, and pointing fingers at each other, that at that particular time you would stop and for the next 10 minutes dig into God's Word together. Or when your schedule is so overpacked and, and you're stressed out to the max and, and, and there's just so much going on in your life that you just don't think that you can keep up with it, what would happen if for the next 10 minutes you would just stop and then help somebody who's struggling far worse than you are with what you have going on in your life? Or when things are going good, you don't have a care in the world, everything's falling in place and, and, and you just can't get any better than that. What would happen if at that point you would stop and turn to the Lord and give him the worship and the praise and, and the thanks that he deserves for all that he has done and continues to do? Think about it. Ten measly minutes. That's nothing. That's nothing in comparison to the fact that we have 1,440 minutes every single day. So that means ten minutes would be only .0069% of your day. You see, when you take on and, and, and adopt that attitude of St. Paul in your own life and you, you press on and you forge ahead, you're going to be amazed at, at how much the Lord is going to be able to work in you and through you and accomplish uh, as he uses you uh, for his kingdom. Think about it. Ten simple minutes. For in those ten minutes, though, I'll tell you this, you will be reminded of God's great commitment to you, that commitment that but knows no bounds. For as we press on uh, to Jesus, there we're going to see clearly about a, a love and, and commitment and dedication and forgiveness that he has for us that, as I said, knows no bounds. There you're going to be reminded about how far he was willing to go and what he was willing to do and what he still does for us yet today to keep us to be part of his family so that we then can receive all the blessings of eternity with him in heaven forever. So, as I close, I'd like all of you to, to think. I, I want all of you to, to really think about what you're going to do with those next 10 minutes. Friends, I'll tell you this. I, I'm praying that, that you're going to use those 10 minutes wisely because it's that important. In Jesus' name, amen. And now... May the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen.